Hey, it's May. I'm back with another video. Today we'll be redrawing some old art and showing the updated designs of some of my old OCs. According to a poll I took on Instagram, quite a lot of people didn't recognize one of my oldest OCs, and maybe that's a good thing, but it, it did make sense because it's been so long since my origins on YouTube and since I've even talked about this particular story. So, as a courtesy to those who started following my art journey a little bit later, I wanted to give a brief intro to each of the characters that I'll be drawing here today. Some of the characters may look a little bit different than you might remember, and some have had some minor name changes as well, so keep that in mind. I'll start out with the pink one. <laughs> so the first of our main protagonists here, her name is Cairo Kaede, and her dream world persona is Autumn. She's very energetic and sporty and charismatic, and just generally a very lovable little creature <laughs> and she's also like kind of clumsy as well too so that's Cairo. coming up next we have Cairo's best friend harumi chibana whose dream world persona is spring she lives with her grandmother in the attic above the cafe that they own and she works there as well she's very smart sarcastic and can come off kind of sharp sometimes but she has a big heart and a lot of empathy for others and a big sense of humor as well kind of similar to Cairo and that's part of the reason why they get along so well and next we have Kaori Hudin whose dream world persona is Summer she is shy a good student keeps to herself and works hard to make her parents proud of her and all that um, she always wears clothes that cover all of her limbs for spoiler related reasons but her heat tolerance is pretty high so she does all right in the summertime and stuff and last of the four here we have Kaori's best friend Minamu Huizuki whose dream world persona is winter she is very beautiful but a very eccentric character around the school she's also very musically gifted in both singing and playing instruments and she drives a motorcycle to school which is really cool so those are the main four protagonists of this story. Um, this story's title is Supernova, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, it started out as a YouTube fan anime back in the day. So, okay, so this requires a lot of like intro and, and more intro and stuff. So back in the day around maybe 2009, 2010, on YouTube, the popular thing to do, well, in a very niche community, the popular thing to do at the time was to create sort of like a your own fan-made anime, and a really popular example was like fan-made versions of Tokyo Mew Mew spin-off parodies. And actually, fun fact, back in the day, Supernova was this close to becoming another Mew Mew fanime. Like it was, the idea was definitely in my mind, but a good friend of mine at the time advised against that and I'm glad that she did because I feel like if I did end up making another Yumi Mew fanime it would have been fun but I don't know if Supernova would have gone as far like still today as it has because eventually I turned it into a webcomic and it would have been hard to keep up with the whole parody thing for years on end and I think it was always meant to be its own thing anyway so I'm glad I did that but I do still want to create a collection of Mew Mew OCs and my own fan-made Tokyo Mew Mew parody one day. The idea is still in my head almost 10 years later. So Supernova, what was it about? So the main concept was a group of friends were lucid dreamers and met up in the dream world as dream world personas of themselves, but also like a Maho Shoujo type persona of themselves. And in the dream world, they would team up and fight against nightmares which were the monsters of the dream world and there were a couple of dream world teams some were friendly and some not so friendly and all of these teams had counterparts in the real world and in the beginning of the story you see one group of friends and later in the story the group would encounter different teams in the dream world and then eventually they're in real life counterparts and it was always really interesting because it sort of revealed the lore of the past of this one character who is actually not pictured here but she is sort of the main instigator of the story and when these four meet that character that's sort of when the story sort of begins in motion <laughs> my main inspirations at the time were anime that i was into at the time like tokyo mew mew lucky star pudi kua and of course other youtube anime that i really enjoyed watching at the time illusion streams is what kind of started it all for me and then i found out about eternal and tokyo new mew and diamond mew mew and paw prince and odd four and tokyo magic star and magical girl school there are a ton of them that i remember it's super nostalgic now i kind of want to just like have a big marathon and watch all of them <laughs> and of course we can't forget 
the classics Mew Mew Berries and Cream and the Caged Underworld. Shout out to the creators of those two in particular. But yeah, that was certainly an era. Unfortunately, I don't think the fanime community is as active today, but back in the day, man, that was that was the thing. And it was great. But anyway, back to what we're drawing right here. So this original drawing, I'm pretty sure I drew it in Fire Alpaca around maybe 2016. I was really impressed by Younger Me's ability to do like perspective and all that. And I hope I was able to like do as good as her. <laughs> so this is the finished product. All right, next. So this one's really exciting because we are redrawing an even older drawing from 2011. And this is probably one of the first digital drawings that I may have even ever done because as we can see, it's done on MS Paint. I miss MS Paint. Um, like the video if you miss MS Paint. <laughs> Anyway, so the character pictured here, her name is Kiki, and she is a honeybee, as you can see. So she is another story instigating character. She is the one who sort of introduces the main four girls to the fact that they are lucid dreamers. She is a dream world character, but she can appear, or she can appear to appear, she can seem like she's appearing in the real world when the characters are dreaming. Okay, so hold on, let me make that make sense. So there are points in the story, especially the webcomic, where dream world characters will appear to real world characters. And in these instances, um, they're not crossing like the boundary into the real world. Um, these are scenes where the real world characters are dreaming, but they don't know that they're dreaming yet until little clues start forming. Like for example, they start seeing characters that only exist in the dream world. Does that make sense? <laughs> Kiki is a special dream world character though, because a lot of the characters in the dream world don't know that they're in a dream, but Kiki does. Like she's like a sentient dream character. Is it because she has a real world counterpart? I don't know. I think that's something we're gonna have to find out. Well, I know but you don't know. <laughs> so there's a couple of aspects of Kiki's design that are very distinct to her. One is that her eyes and her hair do not reflect light. Now, this has had to be revised in little ways over the years just to make it easier to draw her and depict these traits. Like for example, back in the day, as you can see in MS Paint, it was very easy for me to just kind of paint bucket tool her hair and kind of her eyes too. I think you can kind of tell over the years, I sort of went back and forth, like trying to figure out which one of those traits actually reflects more light. <laughs> but I mean, this is kind of the canon color of her hair and eyes is Vanta Black, which basically is like, can be depicted in like paint bucket tool just black for both her hair and eyes. But as far as the design visual aesthetics, that doesn't always like work. I don't know. I guess in theory, I could have done just a straight like black color for her hair and eyes. But as you can see in my newer version, I sort of did a little bit of lightness in her hair just so you could kind of see the dimension of it better. And I'm happy with how I was able to depict the modern design. But honestly, I think this legacy character design shines the best in MS Paint. <laughs> I think this character is meant to be drawn in MS Paint to like look like herself. So I updated her costume design to kind of look a little bit more like a honeybee and I hope you like it. So that's that one. <laughs> in this case the modern one's nice but the old one is just so iconic. Okay moving on. The final picture we are redrawing today is a group shot of the four seasons. They are the dream world counterparts of the four girls we mentioned earlier in the video. The original drawing here was drawn in Photoshop Elements in the year 2012. And in case you haven't already noticed, you can tell that these four characters have gone through some quite significant design changes over the years. Not only in their visual design, but also their weapons and methods of attacks too. Like you can see in the original picture, they're each holding a weapon of some kind unique to them. And now the story has been rewritten so as that each of the girls fight without a weapon. Like they don't need a weapon to fight, but each of their attacks are unique to the season that they are. Like for example, Autumn, when she wants to attack, she can materialize pumpkins <laughs> at the end of her hands and just like punch the ground and cause earthquakes and stuff. Or she can punch other things, I guess. And she also has the ability to dissolve herself into a pile of leaves 
for quick escape or to be temporarily invisible. I'm not going to individually go over what each of them can do in this video, but you get the idea. I changed it so that they don't need like a physical like staff or weapon to fight. They can just have like an ability according to what season they are. This redraw in particular was very nostalgic. This is an old group of OCs, but I'm very attached to them still to this day, even though I'm not really working on their story as actively. So I mentioned earlier that I pivoted the direction of the story to be told in the form of a webcomic rather than an animated YouTube series. Believe it or not, I still really do want to complete this story. It needs a lot of work though because you have to bear in mind that I wrote it when I was 14 and it started out with a lot of plot holes and inconsistencies that I've sort of ironed out over the years but it's still very much an imperfect story. So that's why recently I've come to find that it might lend itself better to a collection of short stories that are very character driven because I think that's one of my motives with writing the story anyway was fun characters doing fun things. It does definitely have a universal overarching plot though. The story has a definite beginning and a definite ending. And of all my stories, I want Supernova to be the only one that will never in its entirety ever be completely behind a paywall. I would like for the story to always be accessible to freely read and stuff. So you can be assured that when I do continue the webcomic, it'll never be behind a paywall. Now, I will say that it's likely that I'll probably continue to release pages first to patrons and then they'll end up public. Like they'll always end up public. I'm actually also planning on building a new like NeoCities website just for hosting the comic, just because I've hosted it on Tapas thus far, but I'm honestly not really happy about how heavy with advertising the site has become, which doesn't make me feel comfortable using it. So I don't know if I feel comfortable hosting the main story of the webcomic on that website. I think I feel more comfortable taking it elsewhere. And I have to reiterate, um, the main story will never be behind a paywall, but the side stories and extra stories and little mini comics that I do for it, I do plan to just release those specifically only for patrons as a thanks for supporting me. Eventually, I'd like to make a print book of all of those, but again, those will be for sale, <laughs> not for general viewing. Like in theory, at that point, anyone could read them, but you'd have to buy the book first. But yeah, that's Supernova. I'm curious, is this the first time you're hearing about it? Or is this like nostalgic to you? Oh, is this part of your childhood? I love hearing when people tell me that my characters or my videos were a part of their childhood. I love that so much. That is just really cool and really special to me. And just a huge honor in general. Like something I made had an impact on your life. Like what? <laughs> However, even though I'm nostalgic for it as well, this project isn't really going to be my main focus going forward. I'd rather focus my energy towards stories that I've conceptualized and written closer to when I was an adult because I'm sort of proud of those ones more and they're a better reflection of my skills as an artist. Again, I'm nostalgic for this one, but I made it when I was a kid and I'm kind of shy about it too for that reason. It sort of feels like very personal. I don't know. <laughs> like it's very much a look inside my heart when I was a kid. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to be known for the stuff I make now, not the stuff I made when I was a kid. Let's talk about the drawing again. <laughs> so the original drawing is a part of one of the original Supernova like opening sequences for the animated series. And it's all of them sort of just generally standing on a mountaintop somewhere during the sunset. And it's sort of a group team pose. So in the newer version, I messed with the angle of it and obviously they're all in their new designs. Can you believe I've gotten through this whole video without a proper script? <laughs> Normally without a script, I am so off topic and rambly and I talk so slow and like at an uneven pace. And for the past few videos I've made, I had to write a whole proper script and stick to it in order to keep the voiceover like moving at a nice pace. But I think for this one, it was a combination of I didn't really know what to say, so I was procrastinating writing the script for a while, but also I think deep down I trusted that I knew myself well enough that I would be able to kind of ramble about my old story and OCs pretty well without getting too unfocused. 
So basically, I just looked inward in my heart and told myself, you know this, you got this, you'll know what to say. <laughs> and I hope it turned out all right. So here's the reveal for the finished product. Here's the old version and the new version. Yay! Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting. And I hope maybe this was a little nostalgic for you too. Or if this is your first time hearing about the story, I hope you enjoyed it. Keep drawing. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.